Hello everyone, welcome to this short video about scaphoid fractures. In this video we're going to talk about the definition, etiology, symptoms, tests and treatment of the fracture. The scaphoid is the carpal bone that most commonly gets fractured. Typically these fractures occur when someone falls and it takes the fall with their hand. Especially if the hand is hyperextended, the scaphoid gets a lot of energy from the fall and this leads to a fracture. The first and the main symptom will of course be that it is quite painful. The wrist will also be swollen. It will have a reddish tinted color or bluish tinted color. And sometimes you might be able to see an abnormal positioning of the wrist. Lastly, it is typical to have reduced range of motion. So you have less movement of the hand and you have decreased grip strength. When a trauma has occurred, a full orthopedic examination should be performed. The test that I will be explaining here today will be focused on scaphoid fractures specifically. A classical sign of scaphoid fracture is that when you apply pressure to an anatomical snuff box, the location can be seen here on the picture, then it will be quite painful for the patient. This is a classical sign and when it is positive, the patient should be treated as a scaphoid fracture until proven otherwise. Indirect tenderness is also a good indicator for fractures in general. In the case of scaphoid fracture, it will be positive when you hold the wrist still, then you grab the thumb, and then you push the thumb inwards towards the wrist. When doing this test, it should cause pain close to the area of the fracture. However, it is not always positive. Another sign to know is that when you apply pressure to the scaphoid tubercle, this is less sensitive compared to the anatomical snuff box, but should be tested for as well. On any indication of a possible fracture, an X-ray should be taken. It can either be taken of the it can either be taken of the whole hand, the wrist, or a more localized scaphoid view. I prefer a whole hand view in order to exclude other possible fractures. It is important to remember that about 25% of early X-rays are negative for scaphoid fracture. If there is still a clinical suspicion of a scaphoid fracture, there's two different approaches that can be done. One is to do a CT of the hand, as CTs are much better at showing small fractures. The other is to treat it as an undislocated fracture. A dislocated fracture will always be seen on an X-ray. To treat an undislocated fracture, you put on a cast and then you do another X-ray 14 days later. Always, and remember, always check for neurovascularity when there has been a trauma. This is the most important thing that you should do. When there has been a trauma to the wrist and a fracture is suspected, the things you should check for are first, vascularity. This is easily done by first pressing the tip of all the fingers for a few seconds and then you release and then you watch whether it goes back from white to red. The color should return to normal within about two to three seconds. Second, you should also check the pulse of the radial and the ulnar artery. You don't have to measure the exact pulse, you just have to make sure that the pulse is present. Second, check for sensibility. This is done by lightly touching somewhere within each of these three sensory areas. Personally, I like to lightly touch the area of the anatomical snuff box for the radial nerve here. And for the median nerve, I like to touch the tip of the second and the third finger here. And for the ulnar nerve, I like to just touch the side of the fifth finger here. If the patient can feel all of this, then it's fine. The last part to check is motoric function. Just ask the patient to slightly move the fingers to see that if the motor function is affected or not. Though this step can sometimes give a fake positive, as for instance, if a tendon has been ruptured, movement will not be possible, but the nerves aren't necessarily damaged. Therefore, the vascularity and the sensibility is regarded as much more important. An important division to know is the three main parts of where a fracture can occur. We can divide it up into distal, middle, and proximal. And they are also, also named the good, the bad, and a terrible in that order. The distal in the picture is the green colored one, the middle is the blue colored one, and the proximal is the red colored one. If you need time to look over this, just pause the video.
the reason why these factors are named as such is because the blood supply to the scaphoid occurs retrogradely. The distal portion is the one that is best vascularized, while the proximal one has the least vascularity. That's why the proximal uh, fractures have a much higher risk of complications. In the distal fractures, there is typically not many complications and it heals just fine. The middle fractures heal also quite okay, but there is a risk of developing pseudoarthrosis in the time after the fracture. And for the proximal and thereby the most terrible fractures, a fracture can cut off the blood supply to that part. And without blood, that part of the bone will die by necrosis. For the treatment, it varies based on the location of the fracture. For the fracture in the distal and thereby the best vascularized region, a cast is put on for three weeks. Even if a small fragment is a little bit dislocated, it is only treated by a cast in most cases. For a fracture in the mid portion of the scaphoid, we have to divide it into undislocated and dislocated. An undislocated fracture, as for instance this one in the picture here, is treated by a dorsal cast on the arm, same way as the distal fracture, but it should stay on for six weeks. If it is dislocated, surgery is advised. And to mention it again, in proximal fractures, there is a high risk of a vascular necrosis. That is actually about 30 to 40 percent risk. Therefore, it is essential to get these patients to surgery as soon as possible, preferably the same day. I hope you have found this video educational, and hope that you have enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them below. Cheers!